Now, my friend who loaned me the meter also gave me a whole bunch of um, Fluke uh, probes. And um, I'm not sure if they actually come standard with it. Maybe they came as bundled as a kit or something. But what I really love are these little babies that came with, and that actually came with the meter. I'm not sure if they actually come with the one you buy. But check them out. These are brilliant. They are tiny. These things are sex on a stick. Really, these are porn for engineers. Unbelievable. They're tiny, okay, little rubber probes. They're rated to uh, 3 amp, um, 1000 volt Cat 3. And um, they're genuine fluke. I'm not sure of the model number. But check out the point. I'm not sure if you're actually going to be able to focus on that. But it's a, it's a tiny, it's a needle point, And it's actually sharp as a needle. It's brilliant. These tiny little probes, very thin cords on them. And of course the insulated things, but these are great for probing today's, um, you know, very dense surface mount circuitry. There's streets ahead of regular probes, and I highly recommend you pick some of these up separately to go with your fluke. I'm not sure how much they cost. They probably cost a fortune, but wow, sex on a stick, really. Now, the main selling feature, of course, with these meters are the data logging capabilities and um, you know it has you know tens of thousands of samples uh, you know uh, built in and you can actually sample the data in here out in the field or something and you can bring it back and you can upload it to the PC later and analyze it or you can actually display it on the screen as a graph and analyze the data on the screen and that's really cool it's a great feature now um, it actually took a fair bit of um, figuring out how to actually do this. It wasn't obvious at first and I didn't have the manual but I finally figured it out. Now I've got it on volts DC and let's say we want to log something you've got your basic menu options here and what you have to do is you have to press save of all things. You know, go figure. You have to press save to uh, get into the data logging mode. You know, anyway it comes up with multiple options and uh, one of them is save and one of them is record. Now you can scroll through with the menus and you need to go down to record and you've got to press the record button and then it comes up with a bunch of options you can set the duration in days and hours and minutes and or you can actually take um, set the sample interval um, and I've actually set it up for one second so it'll sample at one second intervals here and of course it's got edit and if you hit start it'll actually start and yes it's actually logging at three four five it's actually take and I'm not sure if you can see it but the power button will actually pulse showing you that you're in data logging mode and that's really quite cool now you can even let it go all the way through and it's showing that it's got uh, two hours and 40 minutes of sample time left so you know that's quite a lot so we'll actually stop it and then it comes up with either save or trend so you can save it for future upload to the PC but I'll hit the trend button, and if you hit the trend button, bingo, there it is. There's the data which we just captured. And of course, there's a noise there. It's uh, zoomed right in. It's actually auto-scaled uh, vertically, and that's um, plus minus 0 0.001 volts, plus minus one millivolt. It's, you know, it's it really zoomed right in. And then you can use the cursor keys to, you know, scroll through, and you can expand the display and... You know, you can do all sorts of data analysis thing. Oh, there's a summary button. Ah, that just gets you back to the normal one. But there it is. It's the, um, it's really cool. It's on-screen data logging capabilities. And it seems to work quite well. I like it. Beauty. Now, unfortunately, because my friend loaned me this and it is uh, freshly cowled, um, he didn't want me to take it apart. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to uh, show you inside it, but... You know, you can pretty much be assured it's the excellent fluke made in USA quality and it's well designed and it uses prime spec parts and all the rest of the stuff, yada yada. Best in the business, really, construction wise. But I do have the service manual. Now, one of the first things you notice when you look through the schematics for this thing uh, is that it, um, it basically doesn't rely on fluke proprietary chipsets. Well, there is a, you know, there is a uh, fluke. Uh, proprietary chip at least one in there's one in here but it's only got some um, input switching and uh, some filtering and a comparator and a buffer and you know current source and it hasn't really got hasn't really got much else 
Now, one of the most interesting things about this meter is that it uses um, standard off-the-shelf parts from linear technology and analog devices. The main converter is a um, LTC2415 um, Delta Sigma um, converter, and it's designed for you know high-spec uh, meters, and it's basically standard reference design. Um, and Flute just copy that. Same with the uh, True RMS converter. It's the LTC1968 device, and there's a couple of um, op amps and things in there. But it's a, it's actually overall the um, the uh, actual design of this thing is a really nice reference example of how to design a top end multimeter using off the shelf parts. Processors. It's actually got two processors. One is a um, MSP. Uh, 430, a uh, TI, you know, the famous very ultra low power TI MSP 430 processors, and that's really cool. But that's that's really kind of surprising why this thing draws so much current. You know, it, it's only got, um, you know, 100 hours supply on six double A's, and it uses the, you know, the famously low power MSP 430. So I don't know where all the power's going. Maybe it's driving the display or something like that. But the um, other processor is a... Uh, Motorola um, MC9328. Um, go figure, and that's got um, external memory and external flash and things like that. Um, presumably the external memory is the storage memory. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but um, yeah, it's a dual processor thing. It doesn't re rely on a actual um, Fluke proprietary processor at all. And um, it's got a whole bunch of standard um, uh, DC to DC converters to generate the various power rails and the plus 20 volts for the LCD and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's um, it's really quite a, you know, a, pretty much it's a good uh, reference design for a high-end multimeter using off-the-shelf parts. I like it. And there's another interesting aspect of this meter that's different to the uh, 87.5. This one um, appears to use um, input um, opto this appears to use optocouplers to actually detect uh, whether or not the uh, probe is plugged into the wrong jack. So if you you know if you got if you set to volts mode and you try and plug it into the amps jack, it beeps at you. Now on the um, 87.5, they actually do that using some sort of I don't know plug-in detection. It detects you know AC field or something. I don't know. But um, this one actually looks like it uses an opto um, you know a lead or a photo transistor to actually detect that you physically plug the probe in which is quite different to the 87.5 so my verdict on the uh, Fluke 289 meter you've probably already guessed it's definitely thumbs up it's worth every cent but of course there are some things I don't like about it you know as I've mentioned for everyday use it's it's too big too heavy and there's you know, annoying um, usability um, aspects with it for every day-to-day -day use. So for just general uh, bench use, I'd much prefer a Fluke 70 or a Fluke 80 series. But, you know, this has some really neat features and it's super accurate and it is worth every cent. As usual, Fluke pretty much always gets the thumbs up.